In this video, I'm going to explain the pinhole camera and introduce the idea of ray diagrams. As an object to look at, I've got a box here with an arrow-shaped hole in it, and I've put a torch inside, so that's sending light out in an arrow shape from the box. Over here, I've got my pinhole camera, and if we look carefully at the front, you can see it's a black piece of paper with a small hole in the middle. And then it's a box, and at the back, I've got a thin piece of greaseproof paper or tracing paper, and if I hold it up, we can see the image formed. Hopefully, you can see that in the image on the back of the pinhole camera, the arrow is pointing down, whereas our object had the arrow pointing up. If I now lay the arrow on its side, so it's pointing that way, and then look at the image formed, then we can see that the image is pointing in the opposite direction. Let's now look at a view from directly above, a sort of plan view, and see how it works. So looking from above, I'm now going to replace my object, which was the box with the arrow-shaped hole letting light out, and just draw an arrow in the same way. Then I'm going to replace the pinhole part of the camera by drawing a line with a little gap in the middle. And then at the back to represent the screen I'm just going to draw a line. Okay so let's label up those. I'm now going to use a ray box to shine some rays of light to work out what's going on. So to represent the hole, I'm putting this little slit in the middle here, and then I'm going to put a little bit of card to be the screen over here. I've now got a ray box which is shining light out in this direction, and light would be travelling out in all directions from the top of this object. To represent that, I can now move the ray and point it in lots of different directions and see if there are any interesting directions. Off we go then, and moving the ray in different directions, always pointing from the top of the object, and if we pause the movement there, we can see that this is an interesting direction because the light from the top of the object is passing through the pinhole and hitting on the screen. Obviously, we could continue moving it and there'll be lots of other directions that the light goes in from the top of the object, which not very much interesting happens. Similarly, we can try from the middle of the object and find an interesting direction in which the light goes through pinhole and from the bottom of the object find an interesting direction where the light goes through the pinhole. But light will be going in all the other directions as well. Here I have superimposed the images of the ray coming from the top of the object and passing through the pinhole and a ray coming from the bottom of the object and passing through the pinhole. Now instead of using a photograph of these rays of light we can instead draw them as pencil lines using a ruler. So let's do that now. First of all, from the top of the object, passing through the pinhole, and then from the bottom of the object, passing through the pinhole. And now we can work out that this must be the bottom of the object, this must be the top of the object, so we must have an arrow pointing down, which is our image. That completes the basic ray diagram, but we could add other rays, such as from the centre of the object, also going through the pinhole, and that would hit the center of the image. In this composite I have combined my completed ray diagram with the photographs of the rays coming from the top of the object going through the pinhole and from the bottom of the object going through the pinhole. Let's not forget that we could draw lots of other rays which are not that helpful for understanding what's going on that would hit the uh, front of the black paper and not do anything else, maybe be absorbed by the black paper. Um, but the key thing that we've seen in this video is that we can draw two key rays and work out from that and explain from that why the image formed is upside down.